What's the first thing that you see? It looks like <clears throat> it's hard to see. It's, mm -hmm. it's uh, switch into your knowing. What do you know this place to be? Great, uh, trees and water. Trees and water. Trees and water. Mm -hmm. Like From, a lake. Like a lake. Very good. What do you sense of this place? It's, uh, it keeps playing in front of me like um, it's, it's, it's empty and it doesn't seem like there's anybody else there. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's, what, I, what I'm seeing is moving, it's not mm -hmm. still. Mm -hmm. um, I'm looking at it and it's sort of like coming toward me mm -hmm. and then fading away. So allow that scene to finally come toward you. Allow yourself to acclimate in that scene. Let's find out what this scene is all about. What's so important about this place? Looks like it's foggy. Mm-hmm. So you can blow away that fog. Allow yourself to blow that away. What's behind that fog? <sighs> the more you talk, the more I'll be able to help. It still seems foggy and not very clear and, mm -hmm. um, and not no, no solid shapes mm -hmm. at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, Do you feel that you have a body in this place? No. All right. So then you can get through this fog. Allow yourself now to drift and float through this fog. What does it feel like as you move through it? it it's pretty blank right now. Mm -hmm. And when you say blank, does blank have a color? Reddish. Reddish, very good. Yeah, it's reddish. Let's find out a little bit about this red. Does this reddish color move? It goes from dark to lighter mm -hmm. red. All right. So I'd like for you to focus on this red and see if it has any type of movement. It expands a little mm -hmm. bit, yeah, and it sort of contracts. So let's keep focusing on it. And as you focus on it, you may want to zoom out and see what this is. What is this red? What is this thing? Keep focusing, moving out. What is the red? What comes to mind? It's... It feels like there's like a filter or a... Mm -hmm. Is the red the filter? Or something between you and the red? I think there's something between me and the red. Mm -hmm. So let's find out what this filter is. What does this filter feel like? Is it an energy? Is it something physical? It's like either I'm too close to something or it's too far away. Mm -hmm. I'd like for you to play with that. Zoom out and see. And then zoom in. Which one feels right? <sighs> like <clears throat> pulling away. Mm -hmm. And as you pull away, how does that feel? A little less 
restrictive. Mm -hmm. So keep pulling away. Zoom out even more. Let's find out what this is. Allow the images to come. Use your knowing. What do you experience now? I feel like I'm sitting on something. I feel like I'm on a... Mm -hmm. And I feel like there's a mist and there's a mountain and, and there's... Let's find out what you're sitting on. What is this place? Like there's a waterfall mm -hmm. and there's a mountain. There are trees. And I'm up high and I can see clouds above me. Mm -hmm. Do you have a physical form in this place? <sighs> I think I have a body. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I'd like for you now to focus on that body. And tell me what that body looks like. What do you first notice? <clears throat> I feel like I'm a man. I feel a like man. I'm wearing something mm -hmm. that's white or it's, I'm getting, um, like cotton, like cotton, mm -hmm. like, um, shorts and a short sleeve, sort of like, I don't know, um, like a tunic or some sort of shirt, like a dashiki would be mm -hmm. for African, but it's not mm -hmm. that, <clears throat> the same kind of shape. <clears throat> so a kind of a square sh mm -hmm. shirt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And look down at your feet, what do you look like? What do these feet look like? Barefoot. Barefoot, what color are these feet? Tan, brownish. Mm -hmm. What do you look like physically? Look at your face. I can't see the face too much. Dark hair. Dark hair. Strong. Mm -hmm. I don't. Uh, I think medium length hair, mm -hmm. <clears throat> but it's black and it's, it's dark hair. It's black and kind of shiny. Mm -hmm. So let's find out a little bit about what you're doing there. Look all around you. I'm just looking down. I'm looking over what do you a see? waterfall. Mm -hmm. How does that make you feel? Check in with your emotions. feel not <clears throat> first thing that came to mind was sort of free mm -hmm. you feel um, free mm -hmm. um, There's a big expanse in front of me, just sort of in the middle of nowhere, like mm -hmm. in the middle of nature. Mm -hmm. Not, not a lot of restrictions. Not sure. What do you imagine you're out there today doing? <coughs> what is it you're doing out there today? I feel like I'm just walking around or just mm -hmm. uh, being. Yes. Um. Not really sure. Mm -hmm. Are you by yourself? Are there others with you? I'm by myself. Okay. <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah, I'm by myself. I'm... I think I'm just spending time alone. Okay, good. So let's close that scene and let's go to the place where you live in that lifetime. <sighs> Allow yourself to be there now. 
Uh, it feels like a very busy, like, city, type, mm-hmm. like, village type. There's a lot of hustle and bustle. There's a lot of people. Mm-hmm. What do the dwellings look like? Mm. Look around you. Sort of thatched roof, mm-hmm. but not, but nice in a sense, not sort of, not as, well, I don't know what it would seem like, but they're nice dwellings. They're, mm-hmm. t- they're close together. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and which one do you live in? Uh, I live with family. I live with my family. Mm-hmm. I live with, like, el- el- some elders are there. Mm-hmm. So describe this place for me and tell me who's there with you. I think it's, I see, like, a mother figure and... I don't think that I'm not, I must not be that old. I'm not, I don't believe that I'm married. I don't mm-hmm. feel married mm-hmm. or anything. Um, there are kids younger than me mm-hmm. and they're, it's like a mom, a, maybe, maybe a grandmother or a grandfather and a mom. Mm-hmm. So they all live under the same, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In the same space. Uh, yeah, and I think I was just, I think I was out and about because I don't, I'm young and I don't have as many responsibilities. Mm-hmm. And how is it that your family dresses? Take a look at the, the women in the family. How are they dressed? There's, there's some head wraps and there's some, like, lots of fabric. Mm-hmm. Women are covered up. Mm-hmm. A lot. Okay. Very good. So now let's go to a time when you're doing what you do to keep busy in that life. I'd like for you to close that scene. And now let's go to the time when you are busy doing what you do in that lifetime. Fishing. Mm-hmm. Where do you fish? I think where, where I, above where I was, well, where I was looking, mm-hmm. <coughs> sort of in the waters. It was, I was above water. So I go and fish. What kind of water is this? Is this a... I think it's a sea. A sea. Mm-hmm. Or maybe it's a big lake. But it's big. <clears throat> it's mm-hmm. beautiful. Mm-hmm. And I... And it's... Yeah, I fish. Mm-hmm. Do you, when you go fishing, do you go by yourself? Or there sometimes. Are there just... Sometimes I go fishing. I use a spear. Mm-hmm. And... Other times, I've worked with other people like to do it for industry, mm-hmm. to sell. Yes. And uh, but to get it for my family, I just go on my own. I prefer doing it an old way, like you, with industry, you do it with nets, and then, but the spear is like how it was done. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I prefer it. I prefer it that way. Are you very successful at fishing? <clears throat> yeah, I'm good at it. Mm-hmm. Good. Mm-hmm. So what else is it that you do besides fishing? I like to be alone. Mm-hmm. Uh, is there any place in particular that you go to that you like to spend time alone? Yeah, where I was looking at. Mm-hmm. There's a part of the waterways that like there not canals, but just areas that are not really used or inhabited. People aren't there, not so I can just sort of float a right. um, little boat mm-hmm. and kind of be on my own. Wonderful. So let's close that scene and now let's move to a very important time in that same lifetime, something that impacted your life. Be there now. <coughs> um, I meet someone mm-hmm. <clears throat> um, that I like. I think that I was somewhat sought after because I was a good provider. Mm-hmm. But I meet someone I like. Uh, but there's I. <clears throat> I feel on some level torn between having a traditional life and 
and being free. Mm -hmm. So let's see what happens with this woman that you meet. What happens next? I think I struggle because I want the relationship, but I also want, I want to have <clears throat> both worlds and there aren't that many people that are, I'm different and uh, it's not, I have to sort of choose. So I, so she, and she's understanding, she's smart. She's smarter than a lot of people that are mm -hmm. around, but still has desires that are similar to the society mm -hmm. standards. So I have can to you, choose. Can you see her eyes? The eyes are the gateway to the soul. Do you recognize this woman's eyes in the life of Aina? Does she seem familiar? Yeah, she seems like uh, an ex. Mm -hmm. Very good. Of mine. Mm -hmm. Very good. So as you connect with her soul, you'll understand the relationship. And let's see what happens next. Let's close that scene and let's move forward to another scene in that same lifetime that was very important for you. Be there now. I'm old. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I, have a, I, I sort of live a separate life from my wife because mm -hmm. I like being on my own. We have kids. Mm -hmm. um, but, and I take, I've taken them out to do, you know, like explore and, and hopefully be as, in a sense, free spirited as I am, but I'm still pretty random compared to everybody else. Mm -hmm. So, and they're more like their mother. Um, and that's fine. I just feel content being on my own more. Mm -hmm. Very good. So now, let's go to the last day of your life in that lifetime. Where are you? Hmm. I'm with my family. They're with me when I'm passing. Mm -hmm. I just die because I'm old. So as you look at that lifetime from a different perspective, what was the purpose of living that life? Hmm. What were you there to do? Just to I helped um, it'd be okay to be a little bit different like mm -hmm. it'd be, it was okay to just not I mean I could and, and to fit in too at the same time like to be a part of society which I wasn't help but also to um, for it to be okay to be who you are mm-hmm very good. So allow your spirit to release from that body. And as you move forward as the soul, I'd like for you to tell me how it is that your life is impacting the life of Aina. How is she connected to this life? She sometimes gets... Uh Exhausted with being here. Because mm -hmm. uh, people are still caught up in being here. Mm -hmm. Like, not. Uh, not. She just. In certain ways, she per not pretends, but has pretended in a sense being here because mm -hmm. she would prefer to be elsewhere where should she be or what does she where does she want to be <clears throat> she wants people that she wants to be with people that are 
where she doesn't have this, she doesn't talk, where they just know what she's thinking. Mm-hmm. And it's exhausting to have to talk. Mm-hmm. Where did she come from that she didn't have to talk? Would you show her where this place is? Or how she was in that form? Where was it so effortless? Yeah, she's she she has been a part of she was with people that didn't use words. Mm-hmm. Um They could just like hear each other. Mm-hmm. Show her what they look like. Show her what she looked like in that life. Did they have physical forms? They could they could have physical forms mm-hmm. and pretty <clears throat> pretty much everybody pretty much looked the same. Mm-hmm. What do they look like? <sighs> like I don't want to say charcoal, but like just like a earth toned in a way like mm-hmm. dirt <laughs> the color of dirt mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. well there's many different colors of dirt like a tan like a tan color mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and what did they look like physically I didn't have hair no hair mm-hmm. and they were humanoid like arms and legs mm-hmm. what did the face look like <clears throat> mm-hmm. Look at the eyes. Yeah, the eyes. They were like. I mean, in a certain way, their eyes were. <clears throat> the part. They were expressive. Mm-hmm. Um, smallish. Uh huh. Smallish eyes, smallish. Everything on their face was small. Mm hmm. Is there any part of their body that's larger? No, their head is just round. Mm hmm. Did they wear any clothes? Mm, no. No. Did they have any gender? Hmm. <sighs> Not really. Not really. So let's find out. Why it is that that life is impacting Aina so much? Where is this life and why is it impacting her? <clears throat> well, in this life she Communication is a big deal. Mm-hmm. And being understood, mm-hmm. feeling understood. And words getting in the way or not being, the other things are clear or not clear, and having to explain who she is and what she wants and how she wants it, and, mm-hmm. and nobody really getting it. And it seeming so simple or having on some level some memory of it being simple mm-hmm. in another life and that it's very frustrating to be misunderstood like just not for people not to get her mm-hmm. mm. so in this lifetime that she had as this uh, telepathic being mm-hmm. does she have family there does she have loved ones yeah 
<clears throat> yeah, she had, she had, she had family mm-hmm. and friends and yeah. Now this lifetime in which is impacting her now. Mm-hmm. All moments are in the moment of now. Mm-hmm. So how is that one now affecting her? Mm. What other things is she receiving from that lifetime? What other blocks? It's like a neutral society. Mm-hmm. So... There isn't a lot of there's no there's not there's not a duality. Mm-hmm. Not much diversity. Right. Mm-hmm. So that lifetime, there was no race, there was no color, mm-hmm. there was no gender. Mm-hmm. Why did she choose to come into this lifetime as a black woman? It was <clears throat> polarizing. Mm-hmm. It's like the opposite experience. Mm-hmm. And she's used to being everybody, in a sense. Mm-hmm. So being standing out from a place that was so everybody's the same. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now it seems that she has landed in a time of the ascension. And there still seems to be a lot of racism. What is the purpose during this time of ascension to still have issues with racism? What's that all about? And why is she focusing on it? It's a, it's a way to heal. Mm-hmm. Um, and to, it's like a, It's like a uh, word? turbo boost into healing. Mm. Who is it that's being healed? <clears throat> is it Aina? Or is it others? It's everybody. It's everybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's about. connecting on a deeper level mm-hmm. and whenever something is so extreme getting past it mm-hmm. like flipping a switch mm-hmm. now did an Ina ever have a lifetime in which she was a black woman before I don't think so mm-hmm did she have a lifetime in which she was a human before? You showed her the lifetime of the man in the village. Mm-hmm. Was that on Earth or somewhere else? That was here. That was here. So she has had a life here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's been here. Mm -hmm. Are there any other lifetimes that are affecting her now? Let's scan. Let's go to the archives and find if there's anything else that's affecting her. See if she's had any experiences, for example, as a shaman. Yes, she has had. All right. <coughs> Would it be beneficial to show her that yes, lifetime? She's seen it already. Okay, very good. So, is this something that she should be doing? Should she be studying shamanism? She's studied it already. She just needs to wake up to it. Mm-hmm. She can. She won't need a lot of restudy. She just needs to. Just a little opening and it'll, things will come. Mm-hmm. 
So I know that she's going to be studying shamanism, but what is the purpose of her being right now on Earth? She helps people wake up. Hmm. Is this how she's meant to serve humanity? It's what she's always done. Mm -hmm. Why does she choose to be in the family that she is right now? It's all... <clears throat> she relates to people. She just... She's, she's able to have all a lot of experiences. Mm -hmm. So did that family give us experience that she needed to help wake others up? Yes, it just gives her a lot of credibility. She has a lot of, she has, she's had strife and she's had things that are very human. Mm -hmm. Besides shamanism, what are her other spiritual gifts? She has, she has touch. Mm -hmm. What does she do with her touch? She's stingy with her touch. Mm. <laughs> she, um, her hands are good when she puts her hands on people. Mm -hmm. What happens? Mm. They feel mm -hmm. relaxed. Now you say she's being stingy with her hands. Yeah, I mean she she's busy, so she's not using she's not doing she doesn't do massage or anything. She could if she wanted to. Mm -hmm. She doesn't have to. She's busy with other things. Um, but she just she knows that touch she can help people when she touches and she does she touches people but she's she likes to she has to keep boundaries mm -hmm. so she doesn't touch as much as she <sighs> as much as she will mm -hmm. is there any other spiritual gift that she has she sees and she knows she sees and knows <laughs> and she tells me that she doesn't She's not able to listen to her guides, but everything comes in as a knowing. Mm -hmm. Who is guiding her? <clears throat> Metatron came up. Ah. Um, Raphael. Mm -hmm. Mike. I think Michael is everywhere. Michael. What are their roles in her life? What are they helping her with? Being... Uh, being okay with being alone in a way, mm -hmm. uh, healing, like helping people break through whenever they need mm -hmm. the right words, the right feedback or reflection. Um, faith. Mm -hmm. So how can she best communicate with them now? Now that she knows who they are, what can she, she do? <laughs> she's, she's done better at thinking whenever she realizes it's a cooperative thing. Mm -hmm. um, tr but the, her trusting and listening to what feels like her intuition. Mm -hmm. This is that's all she needs to do. Now we've been told many, many times throughout all of our awakening that we need to meditate. And she says that she falls asleep when she meditates. What's going on with that? <sighs> she meditates when she moves her body. Mm. So her physical activity is a meditation? Mm -hmm. How does that work? Because a lot of people can't sit still to meditate. How does she use her body to meditate? Whether it be walking the dogs or <clears throat> riding, riding a bike or... It's about being present. She's present. When she's present, she's meditating. Mm -hmm. when, she's in, when she's in activity, she's meditating because it keeps her in the keeps her in the now. Mm -hmm. Does the breath keep her in the now? Yeah, she she and she pays attention to her breathing. Mm -hmm. yoga, so when, when yoga she, does it, she yoga does it. Mm -hmm. Now she tells me when she does try to meditate, she falls asleep. What's happening at that time? Where does she go?
She leaves. Mm-hmm. She, her body rests a little bit, but she just, she's sort of reconnecting with herself. Mm-hmm. What happens in those moments when someone kind of clicks out during a meditation? Depends. Some people are busy doing other things and, and other dimensions, and some people are visiting with <clears throat> their families mm-hmm. on other places. Mm-hmm. And in her case? She's up in space, usually. Mm-hmm. What is there in space that she loves so much? Stars. Would, stars. Would you show her where she goes now and what she sees when she clicks out? It's like infinity. Mm-hmm. Does she meet up with anyone? <sighs> Sometimes. Mm-hmm. She's, she likes to be on her own. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so she doesn't go around with others? Mm-hmm. She's on her own? Mm-hmm. Now, she says that even during these meditations, she's seen orbs. Mm. And she saw a red-headed woman. Would you tell her what that was all about? What is, first of all, the significance of the orbs? She's always... She doubts her... (laughs) She doubts her... uh, How can I put it? Um, Her ability to, like, because her gifts are sort of not fantastical. They seem like, in her mind, Mm -hmm. they're like behind the scenes. Her her knowing, she knows things as opposed, you can't really like see it. Mm -hmm. It's like like you can make a rabbit appear. Um, So the orbs are just like information of like, if you want to see stuff, you can see stuff. Mm -hmm. But that's not what, your gift is. Mm-hmm. It's not the point. You don't have to do all the things in this in this existence mm-hmm. um, or this experience. <clears throat> so just sort of uh, there's whether you see it or not. There's uh, stuff everywhere all the time. Mm-hmm. So just sort of like here, if you want if you want to manifest that, make it make that happen. You can. Okay. And um, the redheaded woman was just a friend someone who wanted to give me more information. I'd asked to get more information. Mm-hmm. And this red-headed woman, is she a guide? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What type of information was she giving her? Uh, just more like breadcrumbs along the way. Like, to, 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 <clears throat> I, uh, <laughs> There was a the feline energy information that was given. Mm-hmm. Um, was new. Mm-hmm. Would you tell her more about that feline energy? <laughs> she always she's always loved cats, mm-hmm. and has grew, she grew up with cats. Yeah, <clears throat> and even though she has dogs, just three little dogs. And she loves them dearly. They're wonderful. Um, she ha- she loves cats and has just a deep respect for them. Mm-hmm. Um, and was she ever feline? Yeah, she's been a cat before. Mm-hmm. And just they're yeah, just t- touching a part of wanting to know. She wants to know, you know, all of her history, which is a lot, mm-hmm. you know. So it was just one more piece of, like, you know, one of the reasons you like cats so much. Mm-hmm. Was she actually a cat, or was she one of those... She was an extraterrestrial. Extraterrestrial. hmm Can you show her that life now?
looks like uh, she was getting like a bluish kind of color. A bluish cat? Mm-hmm, blue and black. Mm-hmm. And very, uh, the only word I can come up with is like very regal. Very regal. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And, and as a feline mm-hmm. in this uh, mm-hmm. civilization, do they walk upright or are they like cats on all fours? They do both. They do both. Mm-hmm. And Show her what they look like. What are the features? St- muscular. Mm-hmm. Square face, cat face. Um... Was she male or female? She was female. Mm-hmm. And what was her role in that lifetime? She was royalty. Royalty. She was a leader. Mm-hmm. <laughs> in some way. Uh, very much made the rules in a way. Mm-hmm. Uh, very strong-minded. Mm-hmm. But loving, mm-hmm. but but, but uh, sharp, and they were. Well, there was there was fighting that happened, and there was warring and such. And she was a leader, somewhat militaristic, I believe, somewhat mm-hmm. in like the military. Who did they fight against? Was it there within their own kind or outsiders? No, outside. Mm-hmm. So when you said she was very quick, are you meaning quick uh, intelligence? Intelligence. Mm-hmm. So she knew and a what good to fighter do. and a good fighter. Mm-hmm. So what was it about that life that she brought forward in this one? She likes hierarchy. Mm-hmm. She likes order, and she. And she loves cats. <laughs> mm-hmm. Good. Yeah. So she understands them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is that part of the being alone? Maybe. Mm-hmm. Good. Now she recently had an ayahuasca experience. She was supo- shown space, mm-hmm. and she was shown source as being artificial intelligence. Mm-hmm. What did that mean to her? She likes to go to space. <clears throat> it's, a, it's home, in, in a sense, like mm-hmm. sky. Mm-hmm. AI. Uh, where, the, on some levels, this is a very sim. It's very sim. It's simulated, mm-hmm. and it's, it's sort of uh, like a. It's like a black hole if you go down into it too much. It's sort of things are created and then it's 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 like they're very. It's hard to put into words because mm-hmm. it's very big, um, but and it's it's infinite. And so there's AI and there's and it's there's not AI and there's. So it's very, it's hard to explain. But yeah, I mean, source is, um, you can look at it from either perspective. Mm-hmm. You can look at it from where source, where you from, from that source. Um, we're all creations. So, and of, 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 of the all, which is everything that is encompassed. So it was, it's, it's too big to put into this experience. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's a lack of, there's a lack of, not respect isn't the word, um, reverence mm-hmm. for things that aren't what we consider organic, mm-hmm. which are also creations. 
Mm-hmm. So um, why does she need to see that? The duality, I think, it was just it was it was don't forget that we exist too. Mm-hmm. In a sense. Good, good. Now she feels that she doesn't need another ceremony like that, but she's still thinking about going into shamanism. Mm. Is there any particular way that she will be practicing? More outside, more. I mean, she'll do stuff inside too, like mm-hmm. with with her clients, with mm-hmm. that, with, like it's like sneaky mm-hmm. <laughs> in a way. Yes. Um, but yeah, for uh, it's mostly for her strengthening her own growth, her own spiritual growth. Mm-hmm. Okay, good. Now. She tells me that she almost drowned hmm. when she was 15 years old. Mm-hmm. What happened during that time? Yeah, she she drowned. She was Did something happen to her soul because she was questioning whether she was a walk-in. If this one soul that she's speaking with now is the same one that she came in with when she was born. Was there any a time when it was switched? Yeah, it was like an... Take a look and see what happened when she was 15. She drowned. She was... Mm-hmm. Allow me to take you back to that moment. I'm going to count from five to one. When I get to number one, I'm going to tap your forehead, and you're going to be in that moment when you are in that time of decision. Five, going back in time now. Four, inside that water. Three, gasping for air. Two and one. Be there now. What's happening? I'm not. I can't, I can't get back up again. Mm-hmm. And I let go. Mm-hmm. And allow yourself to see this from your soul's perspective. What's going on with your soul as yeah, this is happening to your body? Um, there's a tunnel that opens up. Mm-hmm. And then I, I yeah, you, and then I don't remember what happened. I, 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 it, I when I'm, I get pulled out and uh, I'm fine. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm okay. They asked me if I, they asked me if I swallowed water and I was like, no, I'm fine. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I think that I came in at that time. Mm-hmm. But I have the memories before. Where did you come from? <sighs> Go back. Go to the moment before you came in. Keep going back. Find that time. Let's see if there was an agreement to yeah, switch. Yeah, I mean, I'm sitting with people. Mm-hmm. I'm sitting with, and we, had, yeah, we had talked about it. Like there's a, there is, there is. Uh, we both had things we needed to do. Mm-hmm. Very similar, not very different. We share basically share the now information mm-hmm. this experience. so why was the original soul of Aina why was it done at that time what should, had that soul accomplished she had gone through being really bullied and, and treated bad and she was she was doing okay mm-hmm. she was doing 
she she had helped. She had done. She had. She had gone through some tough. Some some karmic debts were paid. Mm-hmm. So is that what she needed to experience mm-hmm. in this short lifetime? Mm-hmm. So did you agree to take over this body then? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So let's find out what was your purpose of taking over this 15-year-old body. To move, take all the experiences before and do something good with them. Mm-hmm. So you didn't really need to, you didn't go through the experience of her childhood. Mm-hmm. No. So what did you bring? Hmm. Survival skills. Survival skills. Where did you come from that you had all of this these part skills? Of, part of the part of my cat pass. Uh-huh. <laughs> the cat pass. Very mm-hmm. good. Did you know what you were going to be experiencing in the future? I knew I was going to be a leader. Mm-hmm. I was a leader. I'm a leader. Mhm. Mhm. Do you have a a name? That you go by in a soul as a soul. Ran Rancha seems Rancha. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So now that you've got this body mm-hmm. and you're here to be a leader, what will you be doing in this lifetime? Helping people become their own leaders. Mm. So why did you choose the physical aspect of a career, the physical body? Mm, Well, we have to be in our bodies when we're here. Mm -hmm. And whenever you get in your body fully, you are, it's like um, having a really, really nice car, but never turning on the engine Mm -hmm. and and not experiencing what it's like to drive it. Mm-hmm. Mm. So you need to use it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And she certainly makes people drive their cars, yeah. don't they? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So now that we understand what's your reason for being here, why is it that this body is having injuries? Mm. What is the cause of these injuries in the knees, for example? What's that all about? Is that a message? Sometimes she needs to slow down. Mm. <clears throat> and she's she has, she's learned to do that. To, mm-hmm. listen, to be in her body. And this meniscus tear that she's dealing with. It'll be fine. Mm-hmm. Can we begin to heal that? even more today Mm -hmm. and let's work on those knees now that she understands that she needs to slow down she understands that her body is her temple that she needs to talk to her body before pushing it a little bit too hard what will it what is it that you're using on her knees Hmm, like a laser beam Mm mm-hmm Good. Now, being that you came into this lifetime, she wanted to know what her role will be on the new earth. What does she need to know about it? She helps people wake up here Mm -hmm. and... She's going to continue to <clears throat> help people stay connected to their bodies. Mm-hmm. As things shift, it's still going to be easy for people or want, they're going to want to leave their bodies mm-hmm. because once they know that they can, um, but they, there's a level of recognizing, I mean, at some point they'll, they're going to recognize how fun it is to be in the body mm-hmm. and appreciate it. Mm-hmm. And so it's almost like I'm a gym teacher, like mm-hmm. just playing. Mm-hmm. So she helps people play. Play with their bodies. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now we were talking about this when we first started about being in the now mm-hmm. and how everybody is awakening. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> what do you need to tell her about this right now? About this wave of information coming, wave of opening up to spirituality? What do we need to know? Yeah, it's happening no matter what. Mm -hmm. And she just needs to follow people's leads and follow her intuition, which she does. Mm -hmm. um, and it's it's already done. Mm -hmm. So how does she handle, for example, a situation where she may be getting a mother who is riding her bicycle and in her class, and mm -hmm. but she's concerned that her children are not awake? that her mm -hmm. husband is not awake. Mm -hmm. How will she be able to handle stuff like that in the future when people ask her, mm -hmm. what do I do that they're not catching up? Yeah, let, them, let them be. Mm -hmm. They'll be fine. Everybody, you know, it seems like it's, it seems like there's a delay mm -hmm. because of how we see time. Mm -hmm. But it's just, it's not a delay, it's, like one continuous line and seeing all of the different points on it mm -hmm. all at once that's all it's it doesn't it doesn't matter uh people are moving forward in their own pace give them love be and and and, and do stay grounded they help you stay grounded in a way mm -hmm. good is the new earth already here for some people mm -hmm. what, um, a, what about for her yeah yeah she's she's uh she dabbles she goes back and forth mm -hmm. to like various places yes um because she her work is not on one it's sort of to br bridge a mm. bit to so, bridge so like be help bridge help people move from one to the next mm -hmm. so she moves from one to the next so sometimes she's in a she's able to she's able to see various levels of ascension or the, the new earth's plural mm -hmm. so that she can sort of like uh i'm going to use a reference of like slavery looks like harriet tubman like gets people from one to the next in a sense but not you know because they want to go so you and and helps people uh recognize it's a state of being more than anything else. Mm -hmm. Now, has she been given any clues that she's on the new earth? Has she seen anything? Yeah, well, manifestation is happening faster for her. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if, if she needs time, her schedule opens up. Mm -hmm. If she needs Whatever she's needing in the moment usually mm -hmm. shows up. Mm -hmm. And she saw something very unusual the other day, a red light behind the clouds. Mm. What was that red light? <clears throat> it was information that, that we're all on a little... Um, Have you ever seen the Truman Show? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> sort of like that. And it was like, oh. So she was being given a clue? Yeah. Just that this is just one. It's a reality, but it's not reality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was just information that, yeah, it's, this is a soundstage. Mm -hmm. So that was a spotlight that fell on mm -hmm. her? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So she was just being given a clue that this is... There is a different type of reality out there? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Now, she tells me that she is trying to uh, start a business. Mm -hmm. And um, she wants to know <sighs> if her finances are going to improve. Now, you just told me that she can manifest things mm -hmm. just when she needs it. Mm -hmm. Why is she not manifesting the finances as quickly as she would like to? What's going on there? memories from this life mm. of just not having mm -hmm. and conditioning from the society mm -hmm. of this experience and <clears throat> that's going to change mm -hmm. she feels less 
weighed down by just the factual need for, you know, uh, A plus B to equal C. Like, you need this to get that to go there, you know. It's just, it's not a, it's just, it's no longer a, it's not a judgment. Mm Mm-hmm. So this lease that she just signed, mm-hmm. she wants to know if she's going to receive this funding to complete the build out. <clears throat> yes. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. So now that we've gone through all of her questions, I'd like to ask you, why did you bring Aina here from so far away? What was it that she needed to know, needed to hear? That she already knows. Mm-hmm. Uh, that she's in touch she she that she is mo- most more often than not her higher self mm-hmm. I mean usually I'm just the one doing everything mm-hmm. so how can she discern her conscious mind from her higher self mm-hmm. her conscious mind is afraid sometimes mm-hmm. doubts mm-hmm. like Every- in finances mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and uh, but it, it's getting less and less in charge. Mm-hmm. So that's nice for her. Yes. Uh, but it's there for her to relate to others. Mm-hmm. She wouldn't be able to relate to others. Because if she was always her higher self, she wouldn't be empathetic. Would exactly. She? Mm-hmm. And she can already, I mean, she can already see the silliness of all the things. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, so there's a need to be in the silliness as well. Mm -hmm. You know, like to be in it and feel it for real. So any other tips about her being in both worlds, the new world and the old world, as she moves forward in this life? Just keep on dancing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just keep on experiencing it and enjoying it for what it is and helping people find the joy in it as well at the same time. It's a balancing, and you know, balancing. I, it's, it's not something I use very often. It's more a being present, mm-hmm. like be present, mm-hmm. be here when you're here, be there when you're there, like be wherever you are, mm-hmm. and 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 um, don't deny any parts of it. You know, it's just an experience. It's temporary, mm-hmm. and uh, and it's fun. I mean, ultimately. It, you, you can look back and look at it as fun. Even the parts that were really awful um, in certain ways, you can look back and see the reason they existed. And you need contrast to experience mm-hmm. this experience, this, du- this dualistic experience. Good. Do you have any tips or any messages for anybody else in her life? Patience. Be patient. Don't, you know... I, uh, judgment is a is a big thing I, that one of the reasons another reason that I'm here too is to help people be less judgmental mm-hmm. um, and so it keeps you from enjoying mm-hmm. the mo- and getting out of the moment what is it's full of so it's the same it's like just spend less time judging and more time owning what is mm-hmm. is that why she also chose the life of a black woman mm-hmm. in this lifetime to deal with that judgment that's right mm-hmm. um, people judge her immediately mm-hmm. and then they have to change their minds mm-hmm. <laughs> so that's fun so she's a living proof mm-hmm. of your judgment is just mm-hmm. prejudging mm-hmm. Mm, good good anything else that you would like to tell her do you feel that we're complete with this session now Yeah, we're we're complete. Very good. Thank you so much. Wide awake, completely alert, feeling wonderful all over. (sighs) Welcome back. Mm -hmm. Wow. How do you feel? It's interesting. (laughs) Tell me your experience. Let me switch that for Shungite so we can get you grounded. You did great. How did this experience differ from others? You're very connected. Um, it was helpful, all of the conversation before, yeah. with you communicating, just sort of trusting yeah. the, 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 the 
ego coming in or mm -hmm. that it would come in because I, yeah. you know, I would come and be like, you're making that up. <laughs> this is lies. Lies. That's <laughs> something. And it was, it's just, it can be distracting. Yeah. Uh, because it's interrupt and it feels real. It feels like it's the ego is telling the truth. So you're like, oh yeah, of course. I mean, obviously, you know, but then if you go with it, yeah, um, you just get a bunch of information. Like for example, I'm in the middle of like when, when I was drowning mm -hmm. and, and then there was a tunnel. Mm -hmm. It was there, yeah. you know, and I could have either ignored it or yeah. said something. And so that was the difference. It, it was, um, I was more, open to the fact that that my ego was being an asshole basically that I was like I can just ignore you because you you just and then I was able to sort of go with it more which was helpful yeah. very very helpful and at the end mm -hmm. basically your higher self says that the ego is part of playing the game here it's right. silliness right so you needed that experience to understand what other people yeah. who are awakening are going through. Yeah, otherwise it would. I, I, there would be no way to relate. No, because if you didn't have that experience, yeah, then you'd be saying no, no. But the but if you're connected, right, right, the ego is not part of it. But it seems that that was perfect. Yeah, because had you not experienced that, you wouldn't be able to be empathetic with other people. That's right. You'd be saying, well, the higher self is able to take the ego right out of the way. Mm -hmm. You need to be focused. Here. Yeah, you need to be focused on connecting with your higher self and the ego is always going to interrupt <laughs> totally because that's part of being human right yeah but the more you spend focusing on the higher self and now you understand the difference mm -hmm. you know as you listen to this recording you'll be able to gauge what is your higher self and what's your ego much easier yeah it's so funny isn't that something yeah and whatever you put your energy on is what's going to expand right of course whatever you think about gets so bigger if you're, if you're thinking about the fear that's why i asked how do you discern you know the difference mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah well that's the thing is it's like yeah fear. whatever i'm fear and that <clears> doubt and fear on. and and that was going on in your session it was you needed to experience that yeah and and that that's the thing that's always will pop up it's like you're gonna <laughs> my ego is so, so obnoxious you're not gonna see anything <laughs> You're not going to see. It's going to be totally nothing to see. Mm -hmm. You're going to see the back of your eyelids, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, why are you so annoying? It's very funny and annoying, but I can ignore that. Actually, last night or this morning or whatever time it was, I was mm -hmm. I was meditating and mm -hmm. and it was all of a sudden there was like a movie playing. Like I was watching a movie in my, and mm -hmm. it was basically like my higher self saying, like, you can see whatever you want. It was cool. Mm -hmm. Anyway, but yeah, that was good. How do you feel about this? You know, I would never have... Whenever you asked me about the... What was in my... The sexual block yeah. and my stomach stuff. And then I went to college and that yeah. breakup. I, I wouldn't put that together. Mm -hmm. How did that feel? And then I remembered that... Oh, yeah. And then you... Whenever he was away is when you realized you were lactose intolerant. But you're really just intolerant to... You were just dealing with this huge betrayal and it was in your gut and you were ignoring it. You were pretending like you didn't know. That was a big part. <laughs> it was huge. Cause I, right. I, I never connected those two. No, you don't. And that's so. why, that's why we do these. These are, these are, this is hypnotherapy. Yeah. You know, this is the kind of stuff you never see out there, which yeah. people don't do. Yeah. Because you need to find that had nothing, you know, this yeah. was connected yeah. to that. Yeah. I didn't know that. And that's, isn't that something? Yeah, that was cool. That part was like, okay. And that, yeah, I was like, and I think that not listening to my gut gets me into trouble, obviously, and can, can cause some damage. And that's what was happening. I was very clear that something was going on, and I was mm -hmm. like just totally ignoring it. How does How is your ego <clears throat> working now? What's your ego saying now? Oh, my ego is pretty quiet right now. Yeah? Yeah. That was a good quieting of it. Whenever that connection was made, I was like, aha. Mm -hmm. Because. So that's what your ego needed to hear. Yeah. Is that there was something important here. Yeah. Yeah. And that I also, as I scan, because you asked me mm -hmm. where to come from or whatever. And I, yeah. and I said, um, I was like. <clears throat> My ego was trying to find some place that it was. And then all of a sudden I went 
And then I got out of the way and it's, mm-hmm. I said college. And I was like, okay, when did that, what, what happened in college? Right. I didn't know what happened. So, um, yeah, no. So how does your body feel now? I feel good. Feel good? Yeah, you I think, feel great. You feel this was a success? Yeah, I feel it was great. It was really interesting. Yeah. I mean, definitely. I mean, I'm going to think about it more, obviously. Obviously. <laughs> but yeah, and, and but that's yeah. what, do you want to share? You want to keep it private? Oh, we can share it. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll take some of this private stuff. Yeah. You, whatever you feel like. Yeah. I don't feel like there was anything that I'd be embarrassed show, sharing. Uh, no, I thought it was interesting. Yeah. Yeah. The cat stuff was cool. It was, you know, I kept being shown like huge, a huge cathedral type building. And I was just trying to make sense of it. Cause I was seeing a body. I was seeing the body of the cat mm-hmm. kind of like the, you know, those shield, those, those, um, really people's crests and like mm-hmm. the, um, and it was similar body of that. Like it was almost humanoid, but not, it was like a combination between the yeah, two. Yeah. Have you seen any of those pictures of those felines? No. Mm, interesting. No. Maybe you can. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. We had a good session. That was great. So tell everybody why you're here. I'm here to basically just find out what my purpose yes. here, what, how am I supposed to help people? I know that I feel very strong and that's my purpose. Yes. And so in what way am mm-hmm. I supposed to be helping people? And also mm-hmm. just to sort of feel, deal with some sexual blocks and some just like things that mm-hmm. I don't know that I have struggled with a little bit. So. So what do you feel now after you've had this session? Mm, I feel light. Mm-hmm. I feel it's a it's hard to explain because it's sort <laughs> of like uh, like a weight is off of me yeah. in a way um, that I didn't know that I had actually. <laughs> uh, feels good. He feels great. Now you've been hypnotized before. Yeah. Okay. Several times. Several times. So what's the difference between this one? Um. What happened differently? I was more receptive. Mm. So that was helpful. I yes. think that um, what I appreciated the most was just the talking beforehand, which helped me understand that there would be some resistance. Mm-hmm. And um, I got some answers Good. in a way that I've never gotten. Good. So that was cool. Yeah. Yeah. Now I spend about 90 minutes before our sessions talking. Mm-hmm. I find out a little bit about your history. I find out, um, you know, the, the questions, we go over the questions, but I do spend a considerable time talking about what hypnosis is, what it isn't, and explaining what's going to happen. And I think that's key mm-hmm. to having a successful session. When you know what's going to happen and you are cooperating uh, with the hypnotist, that's really the key because hypnosis is not something that I do to you. It's something mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. you do to yourself. You mm-hmm. put yourself into that trance. So when we're both in agreement that that's what's going to happen, it makes it flow so much easier. And that ego of yours is always going to be in there chattering away, telling you, it's not real. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's, that's how it feels. That's like. how it feels. Yeah. yeah. I was being told consistently that I was lying. <laughs> and so, and I would ignore it. And then whenever yeah. I, and after a while it fade away. Yeah. So that was cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's the ego for you. The ego always thinks it knows everything. Mm-hmm. So if you would like a session with me, just go to my website, albaweinman.com. Um, go to the out of town page, sign up for my newsletter. And when that newsletter comes out about once a month, Click on those links really quick because those sessions go quickly. Now, right now, we are in Austin, Texas. And where'd you come from? Seattle. Seattle. <laughs> and uh, Aina is, is starting a business. What is it that you do? Um, I'm an indoor cycle instructor. Yeah. And I'm starting a business called The Ride in Seattle. It says indoor cycling and it also has meditation. So Yeah. yeah. So this is going to be interesting. Mm-hmm. So if you're in the Seattle area... Look her up, Mm -hmm. the ride, ride. and uh, get yourself in shape mentally, physically, spiritually. You know where to to look her up in the future. So thank you for watching, and I hope I get to meet you sometime soon. Bye. Mm -hmm. Give me that hug.